Life is meant to be lived to the fullest. Life is meant to be enjoyed. But how do you deal with people you don't like? How do you deal with people you even hate? At yan ang ating pag-aaral ngayon, how to get rid of people you hate or dislike very strongly. Paano nga ba iwawagwag ang masabuhay natin ang mga taong ayaw na ayaw natin sa kanila? Panginoon, salamat dahil kayo'y maibigin at kahit di kami laging kaibig-ibig ay minamahal niyo po kami. Turuan niyo kami matuto mula sa inyo, Panginoon. At turuan niyo kami palayain ang aming buhay mula sa mga negative emotions. Teach us how to be free from hatred and from people that we hate. Lead us, O Lord, so that we can have peace and quiet in our lives. And in that peace and quiet, we can behold you. And we can become more and more like your Son, Jesus. Father, be our teacher. Lead us. Teach us. Use your servant only as your instrument. Patawarin niyo kami sa mga kasalanan namin, O Diyos. Pakalinisin niyo po kami. We ask you to cleanse us and lead us unto that life that you have designed for us. Be our teacher. Be our speaker, O God. We seek you in the name of our teacher, our Lord, our Savior, your Son, Jesus. Amen. Why get rid of people you hate? Bakit nga ba kailangan patalsikin mula sa buhay natin ang mga taong kinamumuhiyan natin o mga taong inis na inis tayo? People you hate or dislike very strongly make deep impressions on you. That's one of the reasons why it should be dealt with. Malalim ang ukit sa ating alaala, sa ating puso, sa ating isip na ginagawa ng mga taong ayaw na ayaw natin. They leave a mark, they leave a dent in your psyche. They hold your memory and attention. They dominate your thoughts. They become your masters. Ayaw man natin, nagiging parang amo natin ang mga taong kinainisan natin dahil napapaikot nila tayo. Nakararamdaman natin ang galit at naapektuhan nila ang ating buhay. One classic example from the Bible is Haman who hated Mordecai. Si Haman ay mataas na opisyal ng gobyerno at ito naman si Mordecai ay isang karaniwang taong ayaw niya na magpakumbaba at ayaw niyang magbaw dito kay Haman because this Mordecai would bow only to the God of Israel. Mordecai was an Israelite and Haman was a foreigner and the Israelites were prisoners in this land at this time. So itong Haman na to, ang taas-taas ng ranggo, ang yaman-yaman, makapangyarihan, pero may tinik sa kanyang lalamunan, may bikig sa kanyang buhay, at ito ay ang pagkamuhi niya kay Mordecai. Esther 3.5 When Haman saw that Mordecai would not kneel down or pay him honor, he was enraged. Ang taas-taas ng kalagayan mo sa lipunan, magngangalit ka dahil sa isang taong wala namang posisyon, pero yun ang epekto sa atin ng mga taong ayaw na ayaw natin. Napapababa niya ang ating pagkatao, nagagalit tayo at kumisan nagmumukha tayong mga katawa-tawa. You become a satellite of the person you hate. When you hate someone, you don't have the own, your own course. You are just taken here to the left or to the right by people that you hate because they affect you so much. People you hate enter and stay in your consciousness, in your memory. Kung may nakatira sa ating puso, dalawa yon, Mga taong mahal na mahal natin at mga taong muhing-muhi tayo. Pareho silang nandun. Pareho silang laman ng ating isipan at pareho silang lagi nating naaalala. Alala mo sila lagi. Pag may kinakamuhi ang kamay, lason sa loob ng utak mo, yung pangalan, yung alaala ng taong yun. Esther 5, 11-13, Haman boasted to them, meaning his friends and family, about his vast wealth his many sons, and all the ways the king had honored him. And that's not all, Haman added. I'm the only person Queen Esther invited to accompany the king to the banquet she gave. But all this gives me no satisfaction as long as I see the Jew Mordecai sitting at the king's gate. Everything was going his way. Inibita pa daw siya ng reyna at siya lang ang kasama ng hari at reyna ng naghapunan. Tumataas ang kanyang posisyon, gumaganda ang kalagayan niya sa lipunan, pero sabi niya, nababaliwala lahat yung nakikita ko yung heman na yan, na nakaupo doon, inis na inis ako sa kanya. So people you hate are spoilers and eclipsers. 
And this early, I want to challenge you to think of your own Mordecai's. May mga tao ba na pag naalala nyo, nakita nyo, nawawala kayo ng gana sa buhay, naiinis kayo, kumukulo ang dugo ninyo, nagngangalit ang inyong mga panga at ngipin, makita nyo lang na nakakalat doon sa inyong dadaanan. They cancel your happiness. People that you hate affect you, needless to say, with or without their involvement or awareness. Yung mga taong sobra natin kanainisan, wala naman silang ginagawa hindi sila nagpapagod, pero may epekto sila sa atin. People you hate, anger you. They uglify you, your looks and your behavior, and they set you back. Sobra kang pinapababa, iniaatras, pinipilipit ng taong kinamumuhian mo. Esther 5, 9-10 Haman went out that day happy and in high spirits. But when he saw Mordecai at the king's gate and observed that he neither rose nor showed fear in his presence, he was filled with rage against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman restrained himself and went home. Tulad ng mga iba na nating nakita sa nangyayari kay Haman, ang ganda-ganda ng araw niya, ang saya-saya niya, sobra siyang uh, kinakasihan ng kapalaran, pero nakita niya bigla itong Mordecai, na inis na naman siya, nagalit siya, pero tinimpi ang galit. Sinupil ang nararamdaman, pero kumukulo sa loob ang kanyang damdamin at umiwas na lang siya at umuwi. Nakakapagod mamuhi. Kung sino man sa atin ang may kinakamuhian dyan, nakakapagod yan. Nakakadrain. Nakakaubos ng lakas. Nakakatanggal ng poise. Sabi nga nila, So, what should you do to people you hate? Or how to get rid of people you hate? Siyempre, pag may tinik ka, dapat mong tanggalin sa iyong lalamunan. Meron po akong kaibigan na tinik. Halos dalawang buwan yung tinik na nasa lalamunan niya. Nagpa-opera na siya, sari-sari na ang ginawa. Hindi matanggal-tanggal si tinik. There was this thorn lodged in his throat. And even despite surgery, it could not be dislodged. It was so inconvenient. Kung misan merong naka parang punyal na nakatusok sa inyong puso, mahirap mamuhi. So what do you do? How do you get rid of people you hate? There's only one way. Forgive them if they had wronged you. It's the only way that works. You can try many ways. Even surgery. But the only way is to forgive. Colossians 3.13 Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Does God give us this advice to forgive for us to become losers? No. God gives us advice to forgive so we will win. Because it's only in forgiveness where you can win. Hindi ka pwedeng manalo na galit ka. Hindi ka pwedeng manalo na namumuhi ka. Ang panalo mo lang pag nagpatawad ka na, doon ka palang makakawala. The only way that you could get them off, that strongly remembered list, the only way that you could cut or lessen or minimize their negative connection to you, the only way that you could be free of and from them is to forgive them. Proverbs 12.16 A fool shows his annoyance at once, but a prudent man overlooks an insult. Ang mga hangal daw, madaling mainis at ipinapakita nga ang kanilang pagkayamot. Pero ang mga matatalinong tao, pinapalampas na lang yung mga nakakainis na bagay para hindi na sila maapektuhan pa. So be good or at least be wise. Forgive. Kung napakabuti mo, magpatawad ka. Pero kung hindi ka mabuti, at least magpakatalino ka, magpatawad ka pa rin kasi ikaw pa rin ang makikinabang. Gusto mong mahalin ang kapwa mo, patawarin mo. Pero kung gusto mong sarili mo lang ang mahalin mo, magpatawad ka pa rin kasi ikaw pa rin ang makikinabang pag nagpatawad ka. What to do with people you hate? Forget them. Isaiah 43.18 Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Yung nagpapatawad lang ang nakakalimot. Habang hindi mo pinapatawad ang isang tao, hinding-hindi mo siya malilimutan. So, kawawa ka naman. 
But you don't forget whatever or whoever you feel strongly about. So what do you do? I remember the boy, but I don't remember the feeling anymore. Ganon, I remember the boy, but I don't remember the feelings anymore. Pag naaalala mo, naaalala mo lang, pero hindi ka nagalit. No? Forget the feelings. It's impossible to forget people unless you have an amnesia. But you can forget the feelings. Yung feelings na masama, be free. Be free. What do you do with people you hate? Turn them into people you could like by giving them positive influence. Nakakainis pa sila, nakakamuhi pala sila. Eh di, subukan natin silang baguhin para maging nakakatuwa na sila. That's the greatest victory. When you turn an enemy into a friend, that's your greatest victory. When you turn somebody unlikable to somebody lovable, that they color and spice up your life, you really have won. Proverbs 25, 21 to 22, If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head and the Lord will reward you. So may kaaway ka daw, gutom, pakanin mo. Nauuhaw, painumin mo. Ang result niyan, hindi man agad-agad, pero kung lagi mong gagawin, mahuhulog ang loob sa yun yan. Hindi ka naiinisin, baka mahalin ka pa, yun ang tunay na panalo. Pero yung gutom, lalo mong ginutom, babangis lang yun, baka pati ikaw kainin. Gipit na, ginipit mo pa lalo, nangangailangan, hindi mo tinulungan, magtatanim ng sama ng loob sa'yo at maghihintay lang ng pagkakataong gumante. Pero kaaway mong mortal, biglang nagipit, walang dugo, dinonatean mo ng sarili mong dugo. Paano ka pa niya kakamuhian? That's why we say, if you can do it because you're good, do it. If you're not good, at least be intelligent, still do the same thing. At the end of the day, you win. How do you deal with people you hate? Change them. Change them positively. Change them with the power of God and with the power of your own love. And if not love, at least your own diplomacy. Then this world will be a better place. Turn them into people you could like by changing your mind about them. They are not likable, alright? Why don't you change your mind about them and you teach yourself to like them? To teach yourself to find things that you could like. It's your perception. And your perception gives you your feelings. So it's up to you. What do you do with people you don't like? Turn them into people that you could like by doing something good to them. People have spirits. We have souls. We react to good things being done to us. Proverbs 20, 22. Do not say, I'll pay you back for this wrong. Wait for the Lord and He will deliver you. Huwag gumanti sa masama. Huwag gantihan ng masama ang masama. Dahil gagantihan ka niya uli ng mas masama. And you will never get out of this cycle. But break the cycle of evil will, of bad relationship with something good. And then you start something good going. You cannot change them. Change yourself. It's a lot easier. How can you change the world? That's too hard. But you can change yourself with God's help. How can you change people you don't like? That's probably impossible. But you can change your attitude towards them. When you do good to people, you begin to dislike them less and less. Try it. When you do good to people, you begin to even like them. That's why the prescription of the Lord is, gumawa ka ng mabuti sa hindi gumagawa ng mabuti sa'yo. Malaki ang pagkakataon sila yung magbago at bumuti sa'yo. At kung di man sila magbago, sa paggawa mo ng mabuti sa kanila, ikaw ang mababago. Magsisimula ka magkaroon ng simpatya, magkakaroon ka ng amor, magkakaroon ka ng malasakit, hanggang mamahal mo na yung tao. Doing good to others changes them, but more than that, it changes you. If there is somebody you dislike, do good to them, and you will notice that you begin to like them more and more. And then change happens. Matthew 5, 43 to 44, you have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So palagay niyo kaya ginagawa ni Jesus ang payo na to para tayo ipatalo? Of course not. Binibigyan niya tayo ng ganitong payo para tayo papanalunin. And in the game of life, 
You know, only love wins. Hatred always loses. You might be able to do violent things against people you hate, but at the end of the day, you're still a loser. You will be filled with guilt. You will have more enemies. You will have less friends. Your world will become smaller. So doing good is good for them and for you. Luke 6, 32 to 36. If you love those who love you, Jesus says, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies. Do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High because He is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Galing talaga ni Lord. Sabi ni Jesus, eh kung minamahal mo lang yung nagmamahal naman sa'yo, ano naman ang points na kinita mo doon? Natural lang yun. Kahit masasamang tao, mahal yung nagmamahal sa kanila. Kung gagawa ka ng mabuti, doon lang sa gumagawa ng mabuti sa'yo, hindi nakakaiba yun. Kahit sino dyan, mga pusakal na kriminal, mabuti rin sa mabuti sa kanila. Magpapautang ka doon sa inaasahan mo lang ng makababayad. Walang kwenta yun. Kasi wala ka namang ginawang mabuti. Pero kung nagpautang ka doon sa parang hindi makakabayad at di ka nababayaran pa, sabi yun, doon ka may point. Minahal mo yung hindi dapat mahalin? Tinulungan mo yung hindi matulungin? Yan ang nakaka-impress sa Diyos. At ang Diyos mismo ang magbibigay sa iyo ng gantimpala. Reward. What reward will God give to those who do good? We don't know exactly, but one great reward is peace of mind. Because when you do good, you have peace of mind. When you do evil, you may try to delude yourself into thinking that it's fine, but you will still feel guilty. Why? Because the Spirit of God lives in you. Pag gumawa tayo ng hindi maganda, meron tayong nararamdam ang hindi maganda sa kalooban natin. At yung tinig na yun ang dapat nating pakinggan, hindi tayo dapat magbingi-bingihan sa ating budhi. Kaya ang isang pinakamalaking gantimpala ng gumagawa ng mabuti, kahit hindi ka pagawa ng mabuti, hindi ka suklihan ng mabuti ng kapwa-tao, masarap ang pakiramdam. Maluwag sa loob. Ayaw mo pa bang premyo yun? Pero hindi lang siguro yun. Marami pang iba. Nakatali ka sa inuutangan mo, pero higit doon, nakatali ka sa pinautang mo. Di ba? May utang ka, matino kang tao, hindi mo malimut-limutan yung inutangan mo hanggang hindi mo nababayaran. Pero may utang ka, hindi ka matino, pwede mong malimutan yon, marami ganon. Pero, may pinautang ka, matino ka hindi, malilimutan mo ba yun? Tandan-tanda mo ang iyong mga pautang, di ba? Ngayon, may pautang ka sa tao, may utang siya sa iyo, meron siyang ginawang masama, hindi pa siya nagbabayad, malilimutan mo ba siya, edi eh, nakatali ka sa kanya. May ginawa siyang mali sa iyo, hindi ka nakakaganti. E di hindi mo siya malilimot, nakatali ka. This is what I mean. You are bound to people that owe you things. And the only way that you could be free from them is to cut off that remembrance by forgiving them. As long as you want to collect, as long as you want to get even, you will never forget. And then you will never be free. Nakatali ka sa inaantayan mo ng bayad. Kahit siya, hindi na niya kinikilala yung tali na yun na nagkoconnecta sa'yo, ikaw nakatali pa rin. And you cannot even move on. How to get rid of people you hate? Don't get, get rid of them. Don't get rid of people you hate. Get rid of your hatred. Because you can never get rid of people. They will always be there. And even if you got rid of one or one hundred, there will still be one million others that will irritate you and annoy you and make you miserable. So the only way for you to change everything is to change your perception. The change must happen within you because you cannot change the planet. Mas madali na baguhin ang pag-iisip. Mas madali na baguhin ang ating kalooban. Ang problema, pag namumuhi ka, ay hindi yung kinakamuhian. Ang problema ay nasa iyo. 
nasa loob mo. At yun ang gusto kong latasin ng Panginoon. The Lord Jesus Christ is so wise as to prescribe the ultimate solution and that is for you to change your heart. Not for you to try to change people around you, but for you to change the way you treat them, the way you deal with them, the way they affect you. Love or hatred binds you to its object. Pag mahal na mahal mo isang tao, nakatali ka, hindi ka mapakalipang hindi mo nakikita, hinahanap-hanap mo, bibiling-biling ka sa higaan mo, pagkawala sa tabi mo, itong mahal mo na ito, hindi ka magkaroon ng katahimikan. Sa Song of Songs, chapter 3, verse 1, All night long my bed and I looked for the one my heart loves. All night long on my bed, brother, I looked for the one my heart loves. I looked for him but did not find him. Can you imagine yung inip na inip ka, sabik na sabik, nagahanap, tas wala? Nakatali ka sa mahal mo. Pero nakatali ka rin sa kinakamuhian mo. Proverbs 10.12, hatred stirs up dissension. And look at this Mordecai. Whenever he looks at him, uh, look at this Haman, whenever he sees Mordecai, nawawala ang saya niya. Nakatali siya. Gusto niyo ba yun? Gusto niyo ba na ito yung nakikita niyo itong nangutang sa inyo, eh kumukulo ang dugo niyo, hindi na nga kayo mabayaran minsan, tapos ito yung kumukulo ang dugo niyo, dumalaki ang utang niya sa inyo, lalong lumalaki ang sisingilin niyo, lalo kayo nalulugi. If you want to be free, do not love or do not hate. Just forget the feelings. But then, God wants us to love. And God wants us to be loved back. So cancel the do not love. Just think of the do not hate. Be free. Masarap naman na nakagapos ka rin sa mahal mo at mahal ka rin niya lalo. Masarap naman yun. Pero nakagapos ka sa kinakamuhian mo, hindi yun masarap. Forget the feelings. No need to love them if you don't love them, but just forget the hatred. But then what else? If you could graduate to the next level of loving them, that is the ultimate victory. How do you forget? You first forgive. Mark 11.25, And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him. Limang beses nagdarasal ang mga hudyo sa templo. Five times a day. And Jesus says, And whenever you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him. So you have five times a day to remember to forget. To remember to forgive. Sabi niya, huwag muna kayo magdasal kung namumuhi pa kayo. Magpatawad muna kayo. At kung limang beses ka magdarasal, at doon sa mga hindi mapadasalin, kahit isang beses lang, eh di ito yung 24 oras, nagpapatawad ka, hindi nagtatagal sa puso mo yung muhi, yung galit, yung poot, ikaw din ang makikinabang. Forgive. Ito ang talagang panalong formula to forgive. Yung, ah, nakakainis ka ha, pero hindi ako may inis panalo ako. Pero yung anang iinis ka at ang iinis naman ako, ako dito, talo ako. Ah, hindi mo ako babayaran? O sige, sa'yo na lang. You're free. Pero yung lagi mo siyang hahabulin, aawayin, papahiyain, you are not free. Bumababa ka pa ng level. Jesus wins by transcendence, by self-control. Because you cannot control other people, then Jesus tells you to control yourself. At the end of the day, you don't make a clown of yourself. You're, and you end up more dignified, more quiet, more placid, more calm. You win. Sino ang kinamumuhian niyo? Ano ang nakakamuhi sa inyo? Lalo na kung matanda na kayo, tapos may galit pa kayo, I mean, hindi na uso yan. Hindi na bagay. Sampung taon na yung hinanakit nyo, dalawang pung taon na yung galit nyo, abay, malaki na ang pagkukulang nyo niyan sa sarili nyo dahil kayo naman ang durusa. Magkasambahay kayo, magkamag-anak kayo, magkapitbahay, hindi kayo nag-uusap, nakakapanigas yata ng leeg. Yung pinipilit mong tumingin sa iba para huwag mo lang makita yung ayaw mong kausapin. Napaka-abnormal na magkasama kayo sa isang lugar, di kayo nag-uusap. Napakalaking kabalbalan. Yung magsamaan ng loob ng matagal, lalo sa matatanda. Kasi parang wala kang pinagkatandaan. Ang tagal mo nang nabubuhay, wala ka pang natutunan. Sayang naman lahat ang kinain mong patola. Sayang lahat ang ininom mong tubig. Ganyan ka pa rin. Dapat ang tao magbago. Lalo ko nadidinig ang salita ng Diyos. Dapat tablan. Dapat makinig. Ang pagbabago ng ugali, ang pagbabago ng asal, ang tunay at patunay 
na kinakasihan ka na nga ng Espiritu ng Diyos. Hebrews 8.12 For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. God is being quoted. Sabi ng Diyos, papatawarin ko na lang lahat ng kasalanan nila at di ko natatandaan pa ang mga pagkukulang nila. Ito yung sinasabing to forgive is to forget. And to forgive is to move on. Ang talino talaga ng Diyos. Alam niya ang solusyon. Ang mga taong ito, lagi na lang nagkakasala. Alam nga naman ako lagi mainis. Lagi na lang silang nagkukulang. Alam nga naman lagi kumulo ang dugo ko. So ang gagawin ko, papatawarin ko sila. Bakit hindi niyo magawa sa iba? Alam nga naman din, lagi na lang kayo mainis. Lagi na lang kayong makonsumi. Patawarin niyo rin. Forgiving people is the greatest revenge. Aha! Ang dami mong kasalanan, ha? Iniisip mo, magagalit ako, makukonsumi ako, mahahigh blood ako. No way, I'll forgive you. Then I'm free. Yun ang winner. Even God could be free from anger and agitation and irritation because He forgives. Something to learn. God forgets. Sabi niya, kung gano'ng kalayo ang silangan sa kanluran, dun ko ilalayo ang mga kasalanan nila. Ibabaon ko sa pusod ng dagat at di ko nauungkatin pang muli. Sinong tumahimik, hindi yung nagpatawad. Make it easy. Make it easier for others also to forgive and to forget you. Mga kapatid, hindi lang yung puso natin na pinag-uusapan dito na magpatawad dahil siguradong marami rin tayong pagkukulang sa iba. As much as we are concerned about forgiving others, we should be concerned about helping others forgive us. Every day, whether you like it or not, whether you intend or not, you offend other people. Sometimes you take their place or they think you take their rightful place. Sometimes you take the promotion that they think they deserve. Sometimes you win this romantic object that they think they should have in their lives. So kung may sinasadya man natin o hindi, may mga naiinis at nagagalit din sa atin. Lalo na kung sinasadya pa natin at lalo na kung nagpukulang talaga tayo. So, tulungan din natin ang iba na patawarin tayo. Kung may kasalanan kayo, magbaba ng loob. Humingi ng tawad, magpakumbaba. Naka, may nainis kayo, magpasintabi. May pagkukulang kayo, punan. May utang kayo, bayaran. Help people forgive you because it's unkind for you to cause others to hate you because it sets them back. Ang tunay na kabutihan ay hindi lang gumagawa ka ng mabuti sa kapwa. Tinutulungan mo rin yung iba para huwag mayamot sa'yo. Kasi ting nayayamot sila sa'yo, naiinis sa'yo, nagkakasala sila, mananagot ka rin sa Diyos dahil ikaw ang dahilan ng pagkakasala nila. So hindi lang tayo nag-iisip na, kailangan ko palang magpatawad. Dapat din natin isipin, paano ko kaya tutulungan yung mga tao sa paligid na patawarin din ako? Yung mga inis na inis sa akin, paano ko kaya aalisin yung inis nila? Paano ko kaya palulubagin ang loob nila na nagagalit sa akin? So who do you hate? What do you hate? It's pointless to carry that weight. Jesus wants you free. Sabi niya, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Pero yung pagdadala ng muhay at galit, mabigat na dalahin yan. Huwag niyong dalhin one minute longer because you can forgive. And you can ask God to give you the grace to forgive. And you can help others forgive you by being humble, by seeking their forgiveness, or by stop being irritating, by starting to be nice. We owe it to everybody. Meron tayong pananagutan sa isa't isa. Aming Diyos, salamat na lang mayroong paraan para maalis ang galit, para mawala yung utang sa amin ng kapwa. Salamat na lang mayroong pagpapatawad. Thank you Lord for the very idea of forgiveness. And because of this, we don't have to depend on others to repent. We don't have to repent on others to be nice and to be good. But we just have to decide to forgive and we will be free. Patawarin niyo kami, Panginoon, kung sinisira namin aming sarili at mga nata sa paligid namin sa pagkikimkim ng sama ng loob, sa pag-iipo ng galit sa aming puso. Turuan niyo kami, Lord, na yung lahat ng ito isuko sa iyong panan. Magbago talaga ang isip namin at pamumuhay at huwag namin ipagpilitan, huwag namin tigasan ang ulo namin na patuloy na magalit at mamuhi. Lumalabas lang ang pangit sa pagkataon namin kung kami nagagalit. Kaya turuan niyo kami, Lord, Teach us to contain ourselves, to control ourselves, to put ourselves under the control of your Spirit. 
Pagbulay-bulayan natin ang mga mensaheng ito, mga kapatid. Let us ponder these things. Let's think about people we probably dislike very much or just dislike mildly, but dislike nevertheless. Let us think of people we probably hate. And right now, don't wait any minute longer. Forgive them. Because by forgiving them, you also seek the forgiveness of God for yourself. And then you set yourself free. Isipin din natin kung meron tayong dapat lapitan, hinga ng tawad. May ugali tayong dapat baguhin para hindi patuloy na mainis sa atin ang mga kasambahay o mga kasama natin sa buhay natin. Lord, in silence, may you continue to give us insights. Finish this message. Bring it to the level of fruition that we will become better persons, that we will become kinder, nicer, sweeter to be around. Pagbulay-bulayan natin at sa tulong ng Espiritu, patuloy nating ubusin ang mga yamot, galit, pagkapuot sa ating buhay na magkaroon tayo ng kapayapaan. Lord, continue to bless your people as we lay still, as we hear your voice.